Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use a Synthesizer. This is gonna be part two, what is sound? So without going too in depth, like I mentioned before the introduction, sound is basically the vibration of the air in different frequencies. So the lower a sound is, the slower the vibration, or the like the lower pitch that you hear is the slower vibration, and the faster it is, is the higher pitch which corresponds over here on the right hand side. So we have 20 hertz at the bottom and we have 20,000 cycles at the top. So basically they tell us that our hearing range is in between this right here, between 20 hertz and 20,000. In reality, if you have the speakers and the amplification to produce a wave that's 20 hertz, I would say most people would feel it rather than hear it. Really, the hearing kind of begins, I would say, maybe around 30, 35, and that's even pretty low. So they say at the top is 20,000 hertz, which luckily I can hear that, probably not for long, but it's not necessarily a pleasant sound. But I would say on average, most people that I've come into contact with, and you know, sometimes I'll ask people, how much can you hear? And I have a frequency generator on my phone, I put it, put it to their ear, and... Most people are kind of between 14,000 and maybe 16,000, which is still fine. You, it's not necessarily a hindrance if you can't hear 20,000, but that's just kind of the concept that you should understand. Like that's going to be your range that you have to utilize. So that's why over here, I mentioned in the intro, I have citrus right here, right? So let's open up this citrus patch right here. So let's just do our due diligence and put it to default. I don't know if I change anything. So it'll probably open up on main for you if you're following along, that's great, but you don't necessarily have to. So here in operator one, if you're familiar with citrus, you'll see these two things. You'll see this two, like what is that? It's a ratio, we'll get to that later at some point. So for now, let's turn this down to zero and now this hertz becomes our control. So let's go to 20 hertz. So what we see down here. So if we play something, you, it's kind of hard to hear really. You can see down here on the right that it's moving. You can see this is corresponding with 20 hertz. So we know that 20 hertz is getting outputted. We can see the meters moving. I don't know if you can hear that. Sometimes you might hear the click of the actual waveform starting. So that's kind of why I say that 20 hertz, although that they say that we hear 20 hertz, it's not necessarily a rule to live by. So if we bump this up to 30, I can hear that one pretty well. I'm sure you can too if you're on headphones. If you're on speakers, depending if they go that low enough, you hopefully should hear that. Okay, so then that's as 30, and we'll see, we can see the squiggle line here. It's gonna be right above the 20. So let's go up from 30 to 40. I would wager most people hear that. And then we can go up here 40 to 50. and so on and so forth. Now without that sound, that sweep, frequency sweep can get very annoying, but now we can kind of see it going up and up and up, and that's what makes this graph here so helpful to us to understand. So as a demonstration purposes, I'll kind of go up maybe to like, let's see, 500. Watch your ears, this might be a little bit loud. I'm gonna just save you guys a little bit, bring this fader down. So we can probably hear that, right? And that lines up perfectly on 500 hertz, just like as we have here. So that's kind of the concept of the 20 hertz to 20,000. Sometimes it's good to kind of sweep through them. Maybe, maybe test your hearing yourself if you're so inclined, but careful in the volume because it can damage your hearing. So the next kind of thing to understand about sound is that a sound wave is exactly that. It's a wave. It starts, it goes up, it goes back down, and it repeats, which is this right here. This is the symbol of the sine wave. If the sound's basic, I'm sorry. This is for everybody who doesn't understand this. So it starts here, it goes up, and it goes down, and it goes back again, and then it repeats. So this whole sine cycle is broken down into degrees. So 360 degrees is one cycle. And the faster you repeat those per, per second will increase the frequency. The faster it goes, this number starts to go up and go up and go up. 
So when this has 500, that means that this sine wave, this cycle is playing 500 times per second. So that's something to remember. Just kind of try to visualize that in your mind. The next most important part of sound is going to be that frequency number itself, because that's going to determine what type of pitch you're going to make. So if you're trying to make a bass and then you're like, okay, let me go up to like 5,000 Hertz, for example. And then you, let me bring this down. This might be a little bit loud. That doesn't sound like a bass at all. So it's kind of important to know where you want to start with. You might want to go down to something like, uh, if this moves, let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's go to something like 82 or something. That's more in the range of a bass. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So. If you want to go for something higher pitch, you definitely want to increase that range. So it's good to kind of know the, the pitch of the sound and the instrument you're trying to emulate and kind of hone in on that area. That's going to be a good starting point. The next thing is going to be the phase. So let's bring up Serum for this one. So with Serum, let's do our due diligence and go to init preset. And let's bring up, the, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this menu, but it's very helpful to kind of uh, look at it. So let's go to basic shapes. And with this knob down here, we can cycle through the basic shapes. So let's bring up a sine wave here. And then this little button here brings us to this view. Now, if you've never seen this before, a quick demonstration, we'll go into this later, but this at the top is going to be the frequencies. And this down here is going to be the phase. So this is that sine wave we just saw in, uh, in Citrus. So it starts here. This one goes down. It meets it back in the middle. It goes back to the top, and then it goes here in the middle again, and it repeats. So this face here, as we move this and change it, you can kind of see that the waveform will want to start at a different position, right? So if we, what is it? Oh, I think it's, oh yeah, double click to reset it. So this is the default, right? So as we move it up, we can see the waveforms going to the right. And if we move it down, then the waveform is moving was it, to the left. So by itself, you'll hear that sound, right? If we move it up, it doesn't make really a difference because phase, in, and so the, you might hear the word phase and you might hear the word polarity. And a lot of people think it's the same thing, but it is not. And this is the reason why. When you change this, Technically speaking, you're changing the polarity of it. Phase necessarily corresponds to something in time with something else. So if we double click this here in the middle, right here, it, does it go as alt? I think that's it. I don't know. I can't get that in the middle. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is basically if this starts at one spot and it goes any, any way at once, it doesn't necessarily matter where it starts if it is by itself. However, let's say you have a waveform that starts here, it goes down and it goes back up, and then you have another waveform that plays at the same time, but this one goes up and this one goes back down, basically the exact inverse. What's gonna happen is it's gonna cancel that out entirely. So that's what's important about phase, is that if there's two things playing at the same time that are opposite of the phase, you're not gonna hear anything, which is what we hear from phase cancellation. So if we go to, for example, let's, get, let's go to init preset, and we load this up, we go to analog, basic shapes, and we turn this to a sine wave, right? Let's turn this other oscillator on, and let's do the same thing. So analog, basic shapes, and then we have the sine wave. So this is two sine waves. If we play it, it's just going to be a double in volume. Now, if we go to this edit, and let's say we bring this all the way down, so now it's inverted and I'm pressing my key, you can probably hear my keyboard, we're not gonna hear anything. Because this is going down, this is going up, this is going up, and this is going down. So imagine if these were right on top of each other. The more this goes away from the center here, the louder it is. So this one's telling it to play volume down, and this one's playing volume up, which corresponds to the speaker going out and in. So now, let's, I'll keep pressing a key, and I'll start changing this phase.
and you see how it slowly starts fading away. Let's bring this up a little bit. Let's bring this, what is it, 100, or was it 80 or something? And then now I play it, and it's nothing. So that's what's very important about phase, and we're going to get into that a little bit later in the course. So to kind of recap on that, one of the main important, the two main components in this demonstration is going to be the frequency, so the pitch, if it's low pitch or if it's high pitched, and the phase if you're adding other components. So when people say flip the phase, they technically mean flip the polarity, which is these are opposite polarity, but phase is going to be referring into time. Because if something's right here and you flip it, it's going to be probably what, somewhere up here? So it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So keep that in mind when you hear the word phase and then when you hear the word polarity because polarity just inverts the waveform 180 degrees, so half of the whole cycle. So that is going to wrap up this video. As I mentioned before, we're only going to keep the or we're only going to keep the core elements of sound and make it useful to you as much as possible into creating patches. So the next video, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into the wave shapes that you can make and harmonics and what those are and how those affect the sound. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next part and I hope you have a good day.